Hello everyone, welcome to my structural analysis tutorial section. Today I'm going to talk about how can we draw the axial force, shear force, and bending moment diagram of this complicated uh, frame structure. First of all, let's uh, have a quick review of uh, about the structure. Okay, this structure is a uh, let's say this is H and this is I. Okay, this is a structure. Okay, a frame. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Point A is a uh, fixed supported. Point C is hinge. Point D is roller supported. Point E is also a hinge. And then uh, F, point F has a concentrated moment uh, and clockwise uh, with the value of 160. And point G is a roller support. Okay, okay. Free, it can move freely up and down. And then uh, there is there are two concentrated load okay one hundred kilonewton at I and one hundred kilonewton at C okay this is vertical and this is horizontal so this is a dimension okay two meter four 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 four, four six okay and then this is four and four okay uh the first thing you need to do okay of course is to find out the reaction force okay. Alright, you need to find out the reaction force before you can draw the sh actual force, shear force, and the better model. Okay, so okay, I already helped you to find out. Okay, G gx is uh, forty five, dy is one one two kilonewton, and then uh, ay is eighty four, ax is fifty five, and uh, ma okay is anti clockwise, two two four kilonewton meter. Alright, so the second thing, okay, okay. Before you start to draw the actual force and shear force diagram, the second you need to do is to do some sort of transformation. Transformation. Okay, what do what do I mean transformation? First of all, for this 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 loading. Okay, you can see that this this is a inclined beam. The load the loading is not expressed. Okay, as E is along the beam. So we need to do some transformation. For example, here I will do a simple illustration. For example, you have a for this case, right? We have a distributed load like this. Oh, yeah, this is four kilonewton uh, per meter, and then this is the distance here is a uh, six, and then the distance here is eight. So, okay, this is point F and this is point G, right? So we need to transform this this into something like this. Okay, and uh, with the proper intensity. Okay, how can we find out uh, this omega prime? Okay, we can use equivalent force. The idea of equivalent force. We know that the total loading uh, generated by this distributed load, okay, is four times six. Okay, is twenty four. Adding at the center equivalently. Okay, twenty four kilo newton. Right. So if I want to transform this kind of illustration, schematic drawing into this, okay? I need to guarantee that the total loading generated by this loading is also 24. We know that, that this is the distance, right? The distance is 10, because from trigonometry, okay? So this times 10 should be equal to 24. So what I mean is that two, omega prime is 2.4 kilonewton per meter. But this is, this is not the end of the story, okay? Okay, you still need to do something further. Okay, try uh decompose uh com com decomposition. It's like this. First, okay, you need to decompose the loading. This is double right into two components. One component is transverse to the load. Transverse, oh, sorry, transverse to the beam. Okay, and the other one is acting along the 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 the, the, the beam. Okay. How can we do this? It's very simple. Okay. You because this is the downward force, right? You can decompose it into two, two, uh, two component, okay? And this is theta, okay? Theta is this angle. So this in the intensity of this load is two point four cos theta. Basically, it's two point four times zero point six. Uh, two hundred and zero point six is uh, one point four four. Okay, kilonewton per meter. Alright, for this one, okay, for this case. 
okay is a uh, size 2.44 2.4 times side angle side theta okay so basically it's 2.4 times 0.8 is 1.92 all right but this is not the end of the we still need to do one more transformation for this uh reaction force for this gx it's pretty simple okay you can do something like this okay and uh, this is the angle and this is the angle so this is gx cosine theta basically cosine theta is 0 0.6 0 0.6 times 45 is 3 uh 27 okay and then uh this one is uh 45 times sine theta is uh 0 0.8 uh 36 all right so okay we already finished the second step transformation okay the third step, okay, is not so. Oh, most of the time, we will directly draw the actual force shear force. Okay, my personal uh, experience will say uh, will be okay. You will we will make mistakes very easily. So what I do, I will choose some point to cut the point. Okay, let's say I will cut this point. Then cut this point to find out the actual force shear force and bending moment at these two points. Okay, so that I, after I draw all the things, right. I can check whether the 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 the, the, the all the uh solution correct or not. Alright? For example I will also cut point D maybe, I don't know. Let me I can, we can try to cut point D and to see what happens, okay? So cut some important points. Cut some important points for checking. Okay, so that you don't, you we can find we can find out whether we draw the uh shear force and the uh, bending moment correctly or not. Okay, so let's quickly go through how can we how can we uh how can we cut the point find out the bend actual force and bending moment. It's pretty simple. Let's say I want to find point B. Okay, B. Okay, and don't forget we have distributed load here. Okay, with four kilonewton per meter, and then we have a horizontal force here. Okay, this is one hundred. So this is two meters. So total loading is eight. Okay. This is a two two four. This is a what? Eighty four. And then uh, this is a fifty five. So we can we we can immediately know that okay. The actual force of this at point B at the right side of point B is forty five. Alright, and uh, sure force. Okay, sure force. Okay. Shear force because this is uh, 84, right? It is 8, so this is 76 kilonewton. Uh, kilonewton. To find the bending moment is uh, it's also very simple, okay? We, let's assume that the bending moment is like this MB, okay? This is the right side of B, let's, let's, let's call it MB first, okay? So, summation of M. Uh, summation of all the moment at point B is equal to zero, including the M B plus eight times uh, one, and then minus one hundred times four plus fifty five times eight. Okay, plus two two four. Anything else? No, no. This this will not create moment. Right? This this actual this uh vertical force will not create moment. Equal to zero. Okay. So MB is nothing, but let me let me use my calculator to calculate first. Okay, MB is a two seven two negative two seven two. Okay, two negative two seven two kilometer meter. All right. Similarly, we also need we also need some important point. I say point D. Okay, point D. Okay, let's try to cut the point. Okay, it's pretty simple. Let's, how how can we cut the point easily? Uh, for example, uh, to avoid mistakes, okay, I will cut the cut, cut the right side. Okay, use the right side. Okay, let's say this is the structure, the right side of the of point D. Okay, so you, you don't see the you will not see the because at, I am I'm talking about this point D right at the right side of point D. So if I cut this point you you will you cannot see the 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 the, the, the roller support here. So, okay. And uh, there's a bending moment here. 
okay and uh, this is the hinge okay and then this is a uh, 160 right so we have a roller support here and then this is uh what is this this is for the five don't forget we have a distributed load here okay so let's find out the the so we know that okay this actual force must be equal to this so this is 45 in tension and the total loading okay of this distributed load is uh let's write the distance first this is four and then four and six okay so the total loading is 14 times four let me calculate first 14 sorry 69 96 i think 14 times four it has four. This something like this, okay. For this is ten fifty fourteen fourteen times four is uh, fifty six, okay. So this is with a distance of seven. Enter. So we know that this load this okay this load will be balanced by this shear force. The shear force is fifty six at this point. If later you can't find fifty six at this point, then it, it means that we make some mistakes. And the movement at point D, okay, it's pretty simple, okay, you can use a similar trick, summation of movement at point D equal to zero, okay, and uh, you will find out that, okay, MD is negative 192 kN, alright, using a similar uh, methods. Let's go through the last point, okay, the point, and then we can add another, another uh, paper. Let's say point point F point F right. So what I need to do is to cut point F like this. Okay, to find out the actual force, the shear force and uh, bending moment. Okay, so don't forget we have a distributed load here with four kilonewton per meter. And then we have an actual force here. Okay, which is equal to what? What is this? Then forty five. Do you remember that we decompose this into uh, 27, okay, and then this is 30, 36, okay, from here, okay, we decompose the load, okay, and then uh, we, we can do a similar trick for this one, this, the load, the total loading here is uh, 24, we can decompose it into two direction, okay, this is uh, theta, 24 times cos sine theta is a, uh, let me calculate first. 24 times cos of theta is 0 0.6. So basically it's 14.4. And then uh, the, this one is sine of theta is 19.2. So immediately we can find out the actual force. The actual force is actually 19.2 plus 27. Okay. 19.2 plus 27 is a. Uh, 46.2 okay the shear force here is uh, equal to 14 times 14.4 minus 37 okay let's calculate it 14.4 minus 36 is uh, that 20, negative 21.6 okay negative 21.6 so, 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 so the shear force at this point is negative if you want to know the bending moment okay let's take some measure of m at uh, point, 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 point f equal to zero uh, how can we do this okay okay it's still uh, very simple okay m of f okay let's say this mf is negative okay because it's it's clockwise okay and then minus 24 times the moment arm the moment arm is 3 and then plus this one, the loading, okay, is uh, 45 times the moment arm is 8 meter is equal to 0. So this one is nothing but, let me calculate this first. This is uh, 48 times, 45 times 8 minus 23 times, 24 times, times 3 is uh, 288. Okay, it's, uh, it's 288. Okay, one newton meter. Means that the bending at the tensile side of this created by this bending moment okay at, at the bottom okay, at, at the at the yes at, at this side okay at this side, okay so we are ready okay we can 
start to draw the uh, shear force and vending diagram now. Okay, so what should we do? First of all, we need to indicate that what we want to draw. Draw this is the actual force, then kilonewton, and then we need to briefly sketch the the the, 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 the structure. Okay, you don't have to make it. You can make it very beautiful. It's up to you. Okay, so what should we do? Okay, um, start let's start from here. Okay, let's, let's define the coordinate system like this. Okay, let's start from this this point first. You know that okay, we have a concentrated uh actual force acting at this point. It's compressing point A. So this uh this at this point okay, is uh negative okay. It's negative. It's a it's a compression force. Negative active force, okay, and then uh in along the beam there is there are no okay there is no, cons there is no uh actual force so re it's it remains unchanged okay, remain unchanged. Okay, let's say and then and then we start from this point. Let's say, let's call this x one okay, this is called x two. Okay, at this point there is no act uh actual force so it remain zero okay and up to now, and then uh. At point B, at point B, what happened? Yeah, let's go to this point. At point B, we know that okay, the actual, the actual, the actual force of the beam, okay, of this beam B, okay, become forty five, forty five. Okay, that is tensile outside, so it's tension, and this is forty five, yeah, forty five. And then uh, along the structure, okay, along the structure. There is no uh along from B to F there is no uh actual force okay uh ho I mean horizontal force acting on this beam so it, the the actual the actual force diagram remain unchanged okay this is tension okay and then uh let's give some coordinates just the samples there's a hinge here huh? there's a hinge here I mean, do there's a hinge here and there's a little support here. And there's a hinge. Let's call this. Uh, let's call this, for example, uh, x three, and then uh, this should be five. I think. And then let's call this x four, and then uh, this is uh, x five. This is uh, mm, I think it should be enough. And then this is x six. Okay. Just now we found out that the actual force of this at this point is for the six point two in tension. Okay, so it's something like this. For the six point two. I hope you still remember that okay. The actual distribution force is one point nine two at this point. So uh we need to reduce the actual force start from this point, okay? So with the slope of 1.92 why why we reduce okay because this is like compression okay this is if you the direction is like this right if you treat it as a it is acting on the right face of the beam it's like compressing the beam so the distributed force is reducing the actual force of the along the beam so for the I think it's too long and reduce it so the distance that it will reduce okay reduce with a constant slope okay constant slope of the slope is one point nine two, so the, so and this is the the magnitude. Let me calculate first. Forty six point two minus one point nine two times ten is uh twenty seven. Okay, so this at this point is twenty seven. Twenty seven. So uh, you can see that. I think they make some mistakes. No, yeah, it's correct. So this is the actual force diagram. Let's write out the equation that describes the actual force diagram. Ah, I think I need another coordinate here. Let's call this coordinate uh, x7. Why? Because there is a concentrated loading here. Later, in, later you will find that you need this coordinate, okay? Mm, so, nx1 is nothing but negative 84. And x7, okay, this one is also negative 24. And then and x2 is 0, okay? And x3 is equal to nx4 equals to nx5 
okay, equals to 48, okay, all of them are tension, and then Nx6 is also compared, it's also, it's also tension, is 46.2 minus the slope, the integration of the slope is x6. Alright, this is the equation that characterizes this the, this equation. Alright, the next thing is uh, the, the, the shear force, shear force diagram. Okay. Alright. So the starting, the starting point of this, uh, we need to refer to back to the original problem. Okay, is pushing is fifty five. Okay, towards the right side of the beam. So it's like this. Let's okay, let's call this negative. Okay, let's call this negative. So this is negative fifty five. The actual the shear force again. So along the structure, okay, the up to point E, there's no change. Okay, the shear force is remain unchanged. Okay, and then uh, up after that after this point there is a jump of positive one hundred with with the difference of one hundred with the with, this is one hundred okay, so this is a uh, forty five and after after that there is no changes of 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 the shear force so the shear force for this column is like this okay, and then uh for for beam H B okay we know that the slope is four kilonewton per meter so uh at the shear force diagram okay the shear force diagram okay there is a straight line okay and the uh, total this point is the integration of the distributed load basically is four times two is eight negative eight all right i hope you still may remember that we find out we find the shear force diagram shear force at point at the right side of point b as uh, positive 79 or uh, 76 sorry so it's 76 76 should be something very high, very high 76 okay then we have a hinge here okay and then we will reduce okay reduce reduce how fast we reduce okay by the slope of 4 okay 46 79 minus 4 times 4 is a uh, 60 so at this point 60 all right, and then uh, we have a concentrated load of 100 here, so we need to jump from 60 down to 40. Okay, the different the different is the the magnitude of the loading, so basically it's 40. And then after that we don't have anything happen with the loading something like this. Okay, we still we keep reducing. Okay, with a slope of four. Okay. This is fifty six, okay, and then uh, after that we have a we have a reaction force po at point D jump one one two, so one one two minus fifty six is a uh, fifty six, okay. So let's see whether it, 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 this is correct or not. Because I think I remember we found out this point. Yeah, 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 this is correct. Because at this point it's 56 positive. So, okay. And we found 46. Okay, makes sense. So it means we are, we are okay up to this point. Okay. And then we keep to reduce. Okay. And then there is no chain, there is no other loading causes uh, problem. So, it should be something like this. Okay. And then uh, at this point is uh, 4 times 4, 16, 16, 56 times, and minus 16 is 40, 40 minus 16 is 34, alright, and then, uh, yeah, this is the shear force diagram for this part, and uh, for the, for the, for the inclined beam, the shear force is negative 21.6 at the initial point, and then the, Shear force diagram is reducing with the slope of 1.44. So this is another this. The slope is 1.44. Okay, and uh, so the magnitude is uh, I think this one is negative 36. Okay, so let's write down the equation that describes 
to characterize the shear force diagram okay vx1 is negative 55 vx7 is uh, 45 then uh, vx3 x2 is uh, negative 4 x2 then vx3 is 76 minus the integration of this slope the, of this uh, of the of the, of the distributed load is 4 x3 and then uh, vx4 is uh, the initial point is negative 40 minus the integration of the distributed load is 4 and then vx5 is is uh, vx5 sorry vx5 is 56 minus 4 x5 vx6 is 40 minus okay 4 x5 oh f6 okay yeah this one is okay this is x6 yeah x oh sorry so vx6 is, uh, is different vx6 is a uh, negative 21.6 minus 1.44 x6 all right